Welcome back to another reading and correcting of The Used Child. With me, Kendar, the Tiger Rights, and Ty, the Tiger Supervisor. Today, we are doing Chapter 22. The door had, a, had been a hatch, but the lock that had been installed next to it was that of a standard door system. Alex was wondering about it, about the different doors and lock, different, about every different door and lock along the corridor. Was there a central computer controlling it like a force? Tristan banged a fist on the door. It didn't sound thick, like a hat should. Open this door, his voice boom in the corridor. This should be a different pattern. Open this door. Actually, you know what? Not even. Not a different paragraph, it should just be the start of this paragraph. Yes, yes, I know you're not responding. Just move along, just move along, you will respond. There we go. Uh, da, 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 da. All right, Tristan bang a fist on the door. It didn't sound fake, like a Good. Open this door. His voice boom in the corridor. A group that had been heading their way turned around and the man heading his <clears throat> heading away picked up speed. If I have to disable the lock, I will make you suffer for it. Right. The man replied. The man inside replied, not stupid. I know who you are. I let you in and I'm as good as dead. Unlock this door and you have my word. I will not harm you in any way. You expect me to trust you? Do you really think I am a man? Do you, do you really think a man like me would still be alive if I went around breaking my word? Alex raised an eyebrow and wondered if that was an act. The one thing Alex had realized without a doubt was that Tristan got his way, no matter what he needed to do to get there. The lock switched to green, and Tristan had gotten his way again. Alex followed Tristan inside the lock. The man on the other side of the room, seated at a table, bloody knife on it, along with bandages, a sealant spray, and a gun, which the man was holding, arm resting on the table. What? The man was on the other. S the man was on the other side of the room, seated at a table with a blood with a bloody knife on it, along with bandages, a sealant spray. And a gun, which the man was holding, arm resting on the table. Holy bleep, is that clunky. Yeah, that's old writing. Stay there. <clears throat> the man's voice shook from exhaustion and blood loss. The trail they followed had been long. He slid his arm on the table to keep the gun pointed at Tristan. The room had a small cooking area, a bed, and a computer terminal. The most basic of lodging. An open case... An open case could have contained a rifle. Tristan was examining that. He glanced at the man. Your boss said there was there's a price on my head. Who put up the bounty? The man started and said, You think I worked out I work with that bunch of amateur? I'd rather shoot myself. So he used them as a diversion. Or it was they were on the on they were on they knew where you were. Figured I'd wait until you killed them and bring you down myself. So you know about the bounty. The man laughed and almost doubled over. Dude, this isn't even war. Everyone knows about this. Who placed it? Since Voyle scheme to growl, who do you think? The man managed to sound defiant. The kid's father? I don't know what it's about, but you picked the wrong guy to piss off. He's all over the media. Do you have any idea what he did? <clears throat> he isn't going after you. He's coming after all of us as retaliation. And from what I hear, he can do it to He's that powerful. Chris indicated the wall next to the man. Show me. The man's, the man's face scrunched in pain as he turned. He left the bloody trail of the hidden controls. A section of the wall flickered and man and woman dancing appeared. The image changed quickly as he searched through the feeds and finally settled on a man. He wasn't wearing the white suit he had when he'd shown up at Tristan's house. The suit was pale green with yellow trim, but it still looked expensive. He spoke to the recorders, 
I don't care what length I have to go to. I will not stand down. From the moment I joined SpaceGov, I have been pushing for stricter laws when it comes to the, the spaceways. Those criminals don't want that. Those mercs who are nothing more than pirates in better clothes with better training, they can't stop me and they know it. So they resort to taking my son. All right, there's, there's something wrong here. Uh, I don't care what length I have to go to. I will not stand down. From the moment I joined Space Gov, I have pushed for stricter laws when it comes to the spaceways. Those criminals don't want that. Those mercs, who are nothing more than pirates in better clothes, better training, can't stand. Those criminals don't want that. Those mercs, who are nothing more than pirates in better clothes with better training, can't stop me and they know it. So they resort to taking, taking my son. I, I mean, I can, it's not actually broken, it's just clunky. He paused, to, he paused to compose himself, but his face still showed the anger his voice didn't. My son has nothing to do with this. He's an innocent, and I did everything I could to shield him from the worst side of people. But they took him. The man pressed a button on the wristband, <clears throat> and a hologram appeared in the air between him and the recorders. Tristan, getting out of a black car and opening the door as Alex escorted Emil. They exchanged word, then Emil entered the back of the Tristan. These two criminals attacked a security agent, stole his vehicle, lied their way into the academy looking for my son, and took him. They took him. Press another button. If you ever want to see your son again, Tristan's voice said from the screen, walk away from this. Space is ours. We roll it, not you. Alex looked at Tristan in confusion, searching for a reaction to the blind forger. Nothing, of course. The man closed his eyes. I will not be dictated in this fashion, he took a breath. Mercenaries keep claiming they are doing a service for the population, getting their hands dirty when others can't. But now, <clears throat> you're showing your hand. Does that Somalian speak for all of you? I'm going to give you a chance to demonstrate he, that he doesn't. Stop it. Bring me my son. Bring me back my son, and I'll know he's an aberration. He paused and took a breath. I want to believe that you'll do what you'll do that because you are the good people you claim to be. That mercenaries help people, but I know the truth. I know the one language you speak, so I'm going to speak it too. Fifty million. Fifty million space gov credits to any one person or group of person who brings this criminal to me. Alex stared at the screen, but couldn't hear any more over the sound of his own blood. Fifty million? And he'd said <clears throat> it over public bid for everyone to hear? It wouldn't be mercenaries coming after them. Regular folks would want a chance at getting that reward. That man hadn't quite turned the entire universe against the two of them. Almost. Kristen made a quick motion that snapped Alex out. Uh, snapped Alex back. The man at the table was looking down at the knife, st knife handle sticking out of his chest. He looked up, blood beginning to drip from his lip. You said you would. You said you wouldn't. The man slopped over the table. Well, there was a reaction. Just in out of the screen. A man and a woman were talking about the market price of food. Find me everything we can about the man who hired me. I'll let's leave the terminal. I don't know if I'll be able to do Just in planted a fist in the screen. Find him! The surface, which was supposed to be able to resist most impact, was cracked. Alex went to the terminal. He had no intention of becoming a target. The target of Tristan's anger right now. Put his earpiece in and tried to make it fit comfortably and set to work as Tristan stormed out of the room. Finding the feed's origin point was simple. It was a public feed. Getting into a broadcaster system was harder. He had to use the terminal's AI as a working platform, and it wasn't much of one. Barely a million line of code strung together over a processor that had been old when Alex was born. He only made it one layer past the public access, but that was enough to get him more details. His name was Thomas Masters, and his curse, it confirmed the man worked for Space God. No wonder he felt confident in offering that kind of room. If Masters didn't, 
If Masters had enough money to buy himself a seat on Space Gov controlling Space Gov's controlling board, 15 million wouldn't even register. And from that seat, he could make the kind of decision that would make anyone traveling between solar systems life difficult. Alex didn't know how much of his story, of his history lesson, he believed, but Space Gov was supposedly as old as space travel, set in place by solar system tired of fighting over the vast emptiness between them. As more and more systems became populated, Space Gov grew until it became the entity it is now, so large it could do what masters threatened. Space Gov was the law in the vastness of space, if it's official. They had ships, and they did go after pirates who became too much of a threat. Alex had had, had run into them a time or two. Mostly, Space Gov acted as, a, as arbiter between solar systems, kept them from erupting into wars that would disrupt the space race. Within systems, the local government was officially the law, but everyone knew that within any system a corporation was established, space govs were the one governing. Corporations rarely caused space gov trouble. They kept their wars quiet. Alex couldn't get much more than that, but he had a name and confirmed the employer, so his programs could take over the search. While they did, he looked at corporate public feeds. Masters was really going after mercenaries, corporation would be at. Mercs were corporations cannon fodder. They were who corporations set out when something needed to be done, but wasn't so important as to risk their own security forces. And he saw this quiet there. Nothing that indicated they were planning on taking action, but they were taking this seriously. Alex cursed. His programs returned a list of banking institutions, and a glance at their security told him he wasn't getting in from this tournament. He tried to think of what else he could try. But where else could he look but until his programs gave him something new, he'd hit a cold stop. He instructed his programs to send what they found to his secure node and disconnect it. He pocketed the earpiece and looked at the dead man at the pool of dark, drying blood. He shuddered. Left alone with the murdered man, Alex didn't believe in stories of the dead coming back to avenge themselves, but he still hated being around them. He almost opened the door. The imaginary twitch of his leg reminded him Tristan had said anything about him leaving. He could leave. He could lose himself in the station's crowd, and Tristan wouldn't find him. But where would he go? He could use his, one of his IDs, make it off the station, find a quiet place, and live and lie low for... How long? Forever? Alex didn't want to lie low. Being with Tristan was dangerous, but that thrill spoke to the monster inside him. Made him smile, reminded him that this was what he needed, deserved. They still wouldn't leave. So what could he do? He didn't have what he needed to remove evidence that had been here. He and Tristan had shed skin cells, or fur in Tristan's case. How hard did they work at enforcing laws? A fight in a hall was one thing. This was murder. Had Tristan left to take left him to take the fall. It would fit his personality, use him and dump him. But he told Alex to find information, which he hadn't given him yet. He chose to believe Tristan wouldn't have given him that order if he'd intended on hearing if he didn't intend on hearing the result. His father's voice laughed and Alex looked at the terminal. He could keep busy. He had to keep busy and not think of the possibility that he was on his own again, alone. He put the earpiece in and made his way through the station system. How long had the man paid for the room? That would tell him when he had to get out of there, even if Tristan wasn't back. The system was schizophrenic, so many computers forced to work together, told to be one system when their core programming told them they were individuals. At least it didn't seem to have to be insane, or not a type of insanity that would kill everyone here. It just made navigating through the chaos difficult. He did find the room, it was long-term lodging, charged the renter account to be objective month. So long as there was money available, no one would show up. It had been paid 12 days before. Alex traced the account to a bank, a medium-sized one, with security he could get through even with this terminal, but he didn't bother. He didn't want to leave, he had 18 days, even if the account was empty. He took the earpiece out. He knew how long he had, the question was, how long would he give Tristan? When did he admit to himself he'd been abandoned? The door opened and Alex was up and on a knife, but stopped as he saw Tristan. The relief he felt almost took his leg out from under him. 
Kristen eyed him, his gaze dropping to the hand. Alex took, the, took it off the knife and took a relaxed position. Stance. A relaxed stance. Tristan had a package under his arm. I tried to decipher the Somalian's expression. Surprise, satisfaction, boredom. Had he expected Alex to run? Had he even cared? That was one e that one was easy. Of course he hadn't. Tristan placed the package on the clean spot of the table and opened it. He ended Alex a sprayer. Start cleaning. Alex looked it over. It was the same thing he'd used in the hover, only more concentrated. He adjusted the nozzle so it would have enough to do the entire room and began spraying the walls. Kept an eye on Tristan as he took a roll, a roll from a package and laid it on the floor. It was long enough Tristan could stretch on it. He opened it and put the body in, closing it. Tristan pulled the human-wrapped package by the door before tapping the control and went in. Even from ten feet away, Alex felt the heat. A portable incinerator. Of course, something that illegal would be available here. There would be nothing left of the body, which meant that once Alex was done and every DNA trace had been destroyed, no one would know what had happened here. What did you find out? Alex forced himself to continue spraying. He'd done the best he could, he knew himself. Not much. The man's, the man's name is Thomas Masters. Like he claimed in the vid, he works for a space god. I found eight banks linked to him, but the terminal wasn't powerful enough for me to get in them. I'm going to need to use the computer on your ship to get in them. Tristan didn't reply. Alex looked over his shoulder and almost stopped, stepped back into the wall at the anger directed at him. Fuck, what are you? He raised his hands. I just did a quick evaluation of it. I swear, I didn't talk to it. I just needed to know what it could do in case he wanted me to work in a hurry. I swear, I never spoke to it. Tristan's face didn't smooth, but he nodded in the wall. So Alex went back to spraying, feeling the Somalian's eyes on him the entire time. The bag beat a few minutes before Alex finished, stand, finished standing too close to Tristan for his liking. For his liking. Considering how angry it looked, the room cooled. Alex, Alex stood. The, li the little that was left was where he was standing. The blood on the table and the floor had turned to a pale pink spot that could be that could be spilled juice for all the organics marker that would be left in them. Kristen handed Alex his knife back. Alex had noticed him collecting it before Kristen on cleaning the room, and he rolled the bag back up. By the lack of crunching, there was only ash left in it. Alex prayed where he stood and then followed Kristen through the corridor. He disposed of the canister after ten minutes of walking, dropping it in a disposal and hoping it would be destroyed as it should be. He returned to them through a part of the station they hadn't gone through before and kept it light and kept to lightly populated area. The intent had been to avoid having to fight again, Alex was sure of it, but it didn't work. They had to fight often enough that by the time they reached the docks, they were covered in blood. That seemed to act as a deterrent, trying to avoid that seemed to act as the deterrent trying to avoid people. The corpulent man didn't give their appearance a second look. Your ship's here and secure, as promised. Kristen ignored him and took a long time with the lock. Alex kept an eye on the dockmasters until he heard the hatch open. Then he backed in, closing it. Wake the boy, Kristen said as he headed for the cockpit. Alex froze. Wake him ill? Why? What was the point of taking him out of cryo if they were leaving? He looked at the door. Tristan had implied Alex couldn't protect him ill. Was this going to be his punishment for having looked through the computer's code? Tristan couldn't be that cruel. Could he? And this concludes chapter 22 of The Used Child. If you are enjoying this, please, a like. If you want to know when the next one's going to be, subscribe and hit the bell. If you want to read the story as well as the other books in the series, they are available on all major e-retailers. If you want to support me and get access to just about everything I've written, that is on Patreon. And if you want to listen to me do these live, it's every Tuesday morning, 8 a.m. Eastern Time on Twitch. The links are in the notes. And with that, I shall wish you a good day.